In the last two videos, we discussed about how to choose an airfoil for your design and what type of wing loading to select based on how you want to fly your airplane. In this video, we will talk about wing design. Let's begin. The wing produces the lift which counteracts the model's weight. The weight of your model can be classified as fixed weight, which includes the power unit, the control unit, and other stuff like the landing gear. The other category includes the weights of the wing, the fuselage, the tail, etc. This type is flexible weight, meaning that this weight depends on the designer's choice. For example, the wing loading value that you choose will affect the size and weight of your design's wing, and thus other components such as the fuselage size, tail size, and the structural weight will be affected. This brings us to the trade-off that a designer must consider. Consider a model aircraft that weighs 2.5 kilograms and has a wing area of 0.387 square meters. This means that its wing loading is 2.5 divided by 0.387, or around 6.5 kilograms per square meter. Now, this plane has flaps and will stall at around 8.1 meters per second or 29 kilometers per hour. The way to calculate the model stall speed based on its wing loading was discussed in the last video. We could have designed this plane with a larger wing, such as with a wing area of 0.52 square meter. This gives a lower wing loading, around 4.8 kilograms per meter squared. This would mean that the plane would stall at 8.7 meters per second or 31 kilometers per hour, even without flaps. This means for roughly the same stall speed, we would not require flaps for the larger wing. This means no extra servo and less heavy battery, so weight will be saved in this manner. However, there is no such thing as a free lunch. Due to lower wing loading, the performance of this model with larger wings would not be as good as before. Also, a larger wing would mean more drag. So, a lot depends on how you want your model to fly. Now, let's talk about wing platform. This is the shape of the wing as seen from the top. The elliptical wing platform is the ideal wing, as it has the lowest induced drag. This wing stalls evenly across the span, but it is difficult to make. The rectangular wing is the easiest to design and build, but it is less efficient. For a rectangular wing, the center of lift is farther out from the fuselage reference line. This means there will be a higher bending moment. The tapered wing comes closest to the elliptical platform. A taper means that the root cord is wider, and thus the wing can be made lighter and stronger than a rectangular wing. The swept back wing has a dihedral effect. 2.5 degrees of sweep is equivalent to 1 degree of dihedral. The dihedral effect gives rolling stability to the aircraft. Sweep also gives directional stability to the aircraft. But sweeping the wing means losing on the lift that it generates. Swept forward wings are better for aileron control, as the tips stall later than the wing root. However, this platform is destabilizing in yaw. Delta wings have a large root cord, which make them structurally efficient, but they suffer from high induced drag. An advantage of this wing is that it stalls at a higher angle of attack. A wing can also be a combination of rectangular and tapered. This makes the wing more efficient, while maintaining the ease of design and building. The bending moments are also lesser compared to simple rectangular wings. Another major design parameter to consider is the aspect ratio. Aspect ratio tells us if the wing is long and slender or short and stubby. The aspect ratio can be calculated by dividing the span squared by the wing area. Aspect ratio affects the induced drag of the wing. A higher aspect ratio wing means that there will be lower induced drag or drag due to lift. Narrower cord corresponds to smaller wing tip vortices. These vortices are to be avoided as these are the cause of induced drag. Higher aspect ratio also means that the cord is smaller, and thus Reynolds number is lower. Very low Reynolds numbers mean more drag and lesser lift produced by the airfoil. Having a long wing is structurally inefficient, and there are large bending moments. When using long and narrow wings, it must be ensured that the wing is stiff in torsion to balance the pitching moment and to avoid aileron reversal. That's it for this video. For more updates on aircraft design tools to design your own aircraft, subscribe to our channel. Here are some more videos on aircraft design. Thanks for watching.